Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we are going to review a movie that was sent to me by Warner Brothers. So I want to give a big shout out to them for providing a review copy for me. This was really awesome of them because I was excited for this. And obviously, you know, when I watched the trailer reaction, that some of that excitement went away once I saw the animation in action. And it kind of bummed me out a little bit. And I was a little down on it, which is a shame because I love George Romero. I'm a huge, huge fan of Night of the Living Dead. I grew up outside of Pittsburgh, um, in Roeville, where they, you know, the mall where they filmed Dawn of the Dead. Like, I'm, a, I'm definitely a big zombie head for sure. And obviously, I love Res Evil and all these things. And, and so, for me, when I heard they were doing an animated version of Night of the Living Dead called Night of the Animated Dead, I was so pumped. I was like, oh my god, I can't wait. And then I saw the cover art, and I was like. Oh my goodness, that's a cool style. I love the cover art, which you can see on screen there. I was like, this is amazing. I hope it even looks half that cool. And then we got the trailer, and I was really, really let down by the animation choice. Now, I will say, like, I'm not going to sit here and just rip it apart. Like, I know people worked really hard on this. Some people who even commented on previous videos who worked on this movie. Um, I know people work really hard, and whether the end result is something I like or not, um, I try to be constructive here like I may be negative in my constructiveness sometimes but I I do understand and appreciate that work was put into it and it was very hard work and that these things were done by choice um, because you know I don't know what the budget for this is and that's always the case when it comes to these types of movies and reviews and discussions I never know what they spend on these animated movies it's, it's hard to, to track that information down sometimes so I don't know what their budget was I just know that from Warner Brothers animation who has done really great stuff with the DC universe and then recently with the Mortal Kombat universe. I've been at least loving the animation. Even at times when I'm not fully on board with the story, I at least, feel, you know, I love the animation. This one was the exact inverse. Obviously, I love this story because it is pretty much a word-for-word -word remake. Um, dialogue and everything, event and everything, like everything here is pretty much a remake of the original 1968 Donna, uh, Night of the Living Dead. Um, and, you know, I thought they were, maybe they'd pull some things from the remake of, from 1990 with Tony Todd, which I love that version, but, uh, but they didn't. They just kept it true, and I see why now, because the writer of this is John Russo, who was the person who wrote the original screenplay with George Romero, and they credit him as the original screenplay writer, and I don't think they credited any other writers on this. I could be wrong about that, but I, that was the credit I saw under writer. So to me, that means they just took that script and just decided, okay, we'll just have people read these lines. Maybe we'll tweak one or two lines in the recording booth. Uh, but basically, we're just going to take that same script and, and you know, have everyone record those lines. So, uh, and maybe one or two lines that from Ben were given to Tom or something like that. I don't want to get into big spoilers here. But if you've seen the original night, 1968 Night of the Living Dead, then you've seen this movie. I mean, there, there's going to be nothing new in here other than the fact that you're seeing an animation. Oh, and before I get into this, actually, I like to do this too. Since I get a free copy of this movie, I like to pay it forward to anyone who's watching this. So boom, there you go. First person to go to that website, put that code in, you will get a free copy of this movie. And this movie is out now digitally if you want to buy it. If you miss a chance to win it with that code, you can still buy it digitally um, or you can buy it on physical copy on Blu-ray and digital combo next Tuesday on October 5th. That's a week from today when this video goes up. So uh, so yeah, if you're interested in this, I would say it's worth owning as a George Romero fan. Like, I mean, I own all the remakes, even the crappy one uh, from a couple years ago. I didn't think I did, but then I was like unpacking stuff recently and I found uh, that the really cheesy one from like uh, eight or 10 years ago. And I was like, oh my God, that's that's bad. <laughs> uh, but I owned it. I was like, I can't believe I own this. I think it was just like a uh, impulse buy at the store because I hadn't seen it. And I guess I watched it once, but I don't even remember it. But the Tony Todd one I love, and the original 1968 one I adore. Um, they are great movies. And so if you know, if you've seen them, you, th there's nothing to spoil here. But if you haven't, I'll try to, to be respectful for that. So the cast. I think the voice acting in this actually was really good. I mean, the animation was hard for me to get into, and I'll talk about that in the negatives. But one positive I'll give to the animation is that after about 30 minutes, I stopped paying attention to it, and I just got locked into the story because it's a story I already love. So I found myself kind of engaged in that way, like, you know, uh, because it was like, oh, I know what he's gonna say next, I know what she's gonna say next, I know what's gonna happen next, but because I love it so much, I still felt like I was watching the movie and not sitting on my phone, you know, which I sometimes do when I'm bored. I put my phone down and I actually watched this, you know, from beginning to end. And it's not a long movie, it's 71 minutes, so it's, you know, an hour and 11 minutes, basically. Um, 
But you have Josh Duhamel playing Harry Cooper. He does a great job. He plays a real douchebag. Uh, uh, Dulé Hill, who plays Ben, does a really great job as Ben. Although Ben, I felt like, was a little less likable in this one. Um, and Harry, I under—I mean, I always understood his motivation. Uh, but Harry was a real D-bag in the original. And I felt like both of them are kind of D-bags in this one, Ben and Harry. But I guess that makes sense. I think that's what Romero was kind of going for a little bit, too, is that Ben's not really heroic. He just, ha he just knows... He just has a plan, and whether the plan goes well or not, he's at least the guy with the plan. Um, and so, but in this one, his plan clashes with Harry's plan, and it turns out Harry's plan is right because that's how Ben survives, which is really ironic and great. But that's all that's from the original movie, too. Um, Catherine, Catherine Isabel, who plays Barbara, does a good job. Um, Stefan Marx as Vince did really good. James Rode uh, Rodriguez as Tom did really great, and Katie Sackoff as Judy was awesome. Then you had Jimmy Simpson, Will Sasso, and Nancy Travis all playing uh, Sheriff McClellan, uh, Johnny, and um, Helen as well. And Johnny was good. He was just in the beginning, obviously, but uh, but he comes back like he does in the original. And this is, like I said, it's just a, a full-on shot-for-shot, dialogue-for-dialogue, pretty much, remake. I think they gave a few Ben lines to Tom at times or shake, shake that up a little bit when they're talking to Harry, but that's all. I mean, otherwise, it's pretty much spot-on. They do up the gore. It is in color. It's... The animation choice, like I said, uh, well, I'll, I'll save that for the next part um, because because I have a lot to say about the animation. Um, but at least for the characters, I thought the voice acting was good. I thought the music was handled really well. Um, and I thought they did a pretty good job, you know, like, tr I mean, I wasn't afraid at any point in this. And I wasn't ever really too afraid of the original either because I was a little older when I saw it for the first time. But, um, but still, I for that or I, I guess i saw it for the first time when i was a kid but i just don't remember uh, so i'm sure it scared me as a kid this i don't know if it'll scare you the animation's too simple um to where i think it will invoke any real fear but they do up the gore and uh, that was something i wasn't expecting but makes sense because a lot of the warner brothers animated stuff has been doing that lately so you see like when someone hits their head on the ground blood comes out of their eyes you know when you see uh you know uh, there's an incident where um, there's two people in a truck and uh, their heads, one of their heads gets like blown in half, I guess, or something flies through the window and chops one of their heads in half and you see parts of their skull and stuff. Again, it's not in gory detail because the animation is very simple, um, but uh, but it does, it is intense. Like, I mean, I guess for, for its style of animation, because it, it looks like an old, maybe like scooby-doo episode or an attempt at one where there's very few frames per second with the animation but i'm and i mean actually i'm even doing a disservice to old scooby-doo i would say even before that like maybe like a 60s you know cartoon um like spider-man is amazing friends maybe that was the 70s but uh you know earlier cartoons it kind of has that feel to it so i understand that that's all intentional um my issue is that i just disagree with that intention i i think if you were going to animate this i would have liked to see something more stylized because then when you did the gore, I think it would have mattered more and popped more. Because in this, you just see the gore, but you're like, okay, but yeah, but it looks like clip art of a skull. And then like blood coming off of it. It doesn't look, you know, really intense. Um, and then also the lighting. Like when you do horror, you want the lighting to be really good. Like Res Evil 2 Remake, when Leon's flashing that flashlight around. Or in Alan Wake, when, uh, when Alan is doing the flashlight in the woods and you see things moving through the woods. Like... Fear comes from the unknown sometimes and what and the less you see. Every time a zombie popped up on screen here, it was shown in full detail. Um, and I, I'll give them credit. They actually animated a different zombie for every zombie that shows up. And they I watched the making of as well on the Blu-ray. It's a neat making of, but there is a lot of self-congratulatory pats on the back. And I, I feel like I don't know why that's there uh, because... They were like, oh, we really wanted the right director for this. And, you know, one of the producers said, and, you know, and I, I knew someone. So I asked them, could they recommend someone? And they recommended someone who was a big fan. And so Jason Xen is the uh, director of this movie. And I think he got good performances out of his actors. Um, but I also think he they cast the movie well. So they probably would have got those good performances anyway. But whoever worked with the actors, they got a good performance. Uh, the music is done well. But the choice of the animation, I feel like, is the, the biggest hurdle to get over in this movie. For me, it's the only thing I'm majorly critical on because once you see the animation, you're like, okay, it starts unweave, uh, un, uh, unraveling other things. Like the biggest question in the world, which is why does this movie exist? If you're just going to model the characters to look like the older characters from the 1968 movie, but make it color and then have new people voice act them, the clash is too, it's too dramatic. It's like, I would rather them 
completely redesigned Barbara like they did in the 1990 remake and completely redesigned Ben and Harry Cooper to fit more of these actors. Not that they have to look like the actors, but just change them in a way. Because when you're looking at like Helen Cooper and you're looking at Barbara, they look exactly, you know, an animated version of the older actresses that played those two parts. And you're kind of like, okay, but that's not their voices coming out of it. And it just kind of throws everything off. So for me, I just kind of, I was constantly being pulled out of the movie, even though I was engaged to an extent because I liked the story, but I liked the story. The, the, other, the visuals and everything kept pulling me out going, why? Like, why, why, why? So I did ask myself a bunch of times while watching this, why did they make this movie? I don't understand. You get the rights to Night of Living Dead and you want to remake it, that's fine. But wouldn't you want to put something new to it, add something, change something? So to give them some credit, they do add one scene in this movie, something I've always wanted to do. I always said if I remade Night of the Living Dead, which I've always wanted to do as well, that I would do the scene with Ben. Ben in the original movie tells, like, she's like, how did you get here? How did you end up at this house? And he tells this story. I was at a diner and I saw a crash across the street. A truck blew up and caught on fire. That's how I found out that these things are afraid of fire. Um, and then I got in my truck and I came, I was driving this way and I started running the gas and I saw the house. They actually animate that and show it. That was not ever shown in any of the previous versions of this movie, um, any of the remakes either, I don't believe. So uh, definitely not in the Tony Todd one. So I've always said, if, if I got a chance to remake that, I would show and not tell. And I, I'm glad they did it because it's a big expensive scene where there, there's a you know diner and zombies coming out of it and, a, and a, you know, like a garage catching on fire and a truck blowing up. Like that's a big scene to film and clearly something that would take a budget. So it's cool that they fit that into this animated version so you could visually see what Ben was talking about. So I liked that, but again, like in the animation style it's presented in, it wasn't that amazing to me either. So I was like, oh, I'm glad we got this. This is a scene I've always wanted to do, but it just, it was still kind of the same animation style. So I just didn't find it that scary or compelling. And plus Ben in the scene literally says, you know, I learned that they were afraid of fire because of a truck blew up. The truck blows up and the zombies just stand up in the fire and walk towards Ben. And I'm like, so they're not afraid of fire, but they are because in the original movie, he, like the Ben is waving a you know flame at them and catching some of them on fire and they do make a sound, but, you know, they feel the pain of, of being on fire. So to me, I was just like, so are they, are they afraid of fire or not? And if they are, why do you say it and not sh show that too? Like, so I, I, I like that scene, but I also didn't like the inconsistencies. So to solve the answer of why was this movie made, I watched the bonus thing and really what I saw was a bunch of people that were self-congratulating each other for, um, you know, coming up with this idea. And I'm like, but what did you come up with? You, Someone came up with a great idea to cast these amazing actors, sure. But you took the original script, so you didn't change anything. You added the Ben scene, but okay, that's great. I'm sure me, I clearly had that same idea, but so did other fans. Um, but you didn't, it's still presented in this choice for animation. And I just don't know who made that choice. Like, who made the choice to animate it in this kind of style? Like, what was the purpose? I guess it was to look like an old school cartoon, but why? Like, why? You could, I don't know. Like, I and mean, why not change the story a little bit and add some new surprise in there for long-term fans? Like, I, I, I just don't understand the, the, uh, I don't know. The, the, I, I appreciate. I guess if they wanted to be faithful to the source material, but I, I, to me, I'm just gonna go watch the original. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, it's, it's like when you got all these versions. Like, uh, why would you watch this version really, uh, you know, more than a couple times? I guess if you're a hardcore fan, like I, I may watch this one more time, but I, I, I don't know if I'll watch it more than that. Um, I'm, I guess I'm glad it's part of my collection because I love having everything, uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Diary of the Dead. Like I own them all. So it's, you know, I, I guess it's it's great to have it in my collection. I, I, on some level, I guess I'd rather have it than not have it. But for me, I just... I couldn't get over the animation. Of course, I love the story because it's the same one we've always gotten. And uh, and of course, I love the characters because it's the ones we've always seen, except Ben in this one is a little bit more of a D-bag. So I kind of felt a little less sorry for Ben uh, for what happens at the end of this story. I, I, I felt less... I felt less sorry for Ben than I did in the original. So uh, so that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this episode as always. But make sure, like I always say, like no matter what my thoughts are and stuff, I encourage you to go check it out yourself. If you're a George Romero fan, a zombie fan, I say still go check it out. I mean, like I said, the animation, I didn't like it, but I still got over it after about 20, 30 minutes in the movie, which is about a little under halfway through the movie. 
But by then I, re I was like, oh, well, I love these characters. I love Ben and Barbara and even Harry Cooper and Tom and Judy. Like, I like these characters a lot. So I kind of was just like, all right, this is familiar and I like it. Um, so I'm locked in. Uh, I'm engaged at least. I'm not looking at my phone. But, but every few minutes I'm still like, yeah, but I wish it wasn't animated like this. So that's kind of like how I feel about this movie. Great story because it was already done before and it was already done really, really well. These actors and actresses, I thought, brought something great to these characters. Uh, minus Ben, I think he was a little too aggressive in ways that I just felt like was more than the original, and I didn't really like that. Um, but uh, but in the end, you know, uh, I want you guys to make up your own mind. So if you have any interest in this at all, I'd say go check it out for yourself. Like I said, it's available digitally now. You can buy it now on digital, or on October 5th, you can buy it on Blu-ray and digital combo uh, also. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.